fairly readily get done. And the battle is lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where are the place upon the heat? There to meet with my best. I come, Greg Alkin. Had at the call. Anon. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and fill the air. What bloody man is that? You can report as seen it by his flight. Of the revolt, the newest state. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the world is thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers, the do cling together, and choke their art, the merciless MacDonald wall, worthy to be a rebel. But all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name, disdaining fortune, with his brandished steels, which smoke with bloody execution, like Bayer's minion carved out his passage, till he faced a slave, which never shook hands nor bade farewell to him, till he unseemed him from the nave to the chaps, and fixed his head upon our battles. O oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentlemen! Mark, King of Scotland, Mark, no sooner justice had, with valor arms compelled these skipping curs to trust their heels. With the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, begin a fresh assault. Dismay not, tis our captains Macbeth and Banquo. Yes, I must report, they were his cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. But I am faint, my gashes cry for help. So well thy word become thee as thy wounds. They strike on our bow. Go get him, sir. Who cometh here? The boy that made Ross. What a face. Looks through his eyes. So should he look. It seems to speak things strange. God save the king. Whence came this from, worthy thing? From fight, great king. Where Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, in terrible numbers, assisted by the most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict. But, to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! No more that Thane of Cawdor shall receive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet me back. I'll see it done. What he had lost, no one be better than that one. Of Cawdor lives, a prosperous gentleman, 
and take case and deny open the prospect of belief to be that of Connor. Say for which you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting. Speak, I charge you, speak! <laughs> Into the air, and what seems corporal melted as breath into the wind, would they have stayed? Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And fate of Connor, too, what's it not so? To the self same tune of words. Who's here? The king hath happily received his back, the news of thy success. As thick a tale came post to post, and every one did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defense, and poured him down before him. We are sensing of thee from our royal master. Thanks. Only a herald in this recital. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me, from him, call thee Thane of Cawdor. In which addition? Hail, most worthy Thane, for design. What? Can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who is the Thane lives yet? But under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. And treason, capital, profess, and proof have overthrown him. Glamis and Thane of Cawdor, the greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not wish your children shall be kings, when those that gave Thane of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? And oftentimes, to us there are harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Once with honest trifles to betray the use consequence. Cousins, a word, I pray you. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me the earnest of success commencing the truth? I am a thing of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seasoned heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thoughts, whose murder is yet but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man whose function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. If chance will have me keen, why, chance may crown me without a stir. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worth the Macbeth, we stay upon your legion. Give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us towards the key. Very good. More than all can pay. The service and Lord Highness's part is to receive our deed. Noble banquet, that is no less. Verify, girl, the harvest is your own. Spirits, no, we will establish our stay upon our eldest son, Malcolm. Who we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland, which honor was not on the company's best him only, but signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all these herbs, from hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. I'll be myself the harbinger, and make joyful the hearing of my wife with their approach. They met me in the day of success, and had learned by the perfect report that they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air, into which they vanished. Whilst I sat wrapped in the wonder of it, convinces me the king, who all hail me, Thane of Cawdor. By which title, before, these weird sisters saluted me, and referred me to the coming out of time with hail, king that shall be. This I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness. But thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Slay to thy heart, and farewell. Glamis thou art, Adam, and shall be what thou art promised. And I fear thy nature, it is too full of the milk of human kindness. Hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise. For the valor of my tongue, all that feeds thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have decried us all. What is your tidings? 
the king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him? Who? Were it so, what have we formed in preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thing is coming. Give him tended. He brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse. The crooks, the fatal engines of Duncan have my out Come! You spirits that tend by mortal thoughts. Unstand me here! And fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of gyrus cruelty. And think, my blood, stop off the access and passage to treatment. Come to my woman's breast and take my bone for gall, you murdering ministers. Come! Thank you, night! And call me in the dunnest smoke of hell. And my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blank of the dark to cry, Hold! Hold. Great Columbus, worthy Codmore, greater than both by the all young hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future and the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall the sun and Mars see. Your face, my babe, is as a book where they may read strange matters. To beguile the time, you must look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. You must look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor, ever is to fear. Give all the rest to me. Then, 
you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you'd be so much more than a man. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its bones and gums and gouged the brains out. Had I so sworn as you have done to this? If we should fail? We fail! But screw your curls and stick in place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will I, with wine and with sail, so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a few. When in swinishes the drenched nature's lie in the death. What can not unite the former upon the unguarded Duncan? What not look upon the spongy officers? We shall advance the guilt of our great well. Bring forth men, children only, for I am daunted and meddle should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received that when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his chamber and use their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive an other? And we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death. I am settled. And bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time of fair show. The false face must hide what the false heart doth know. My lord, I'm doing this down. At not for the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take it to play this, sir. Her husband's dream, heaven. The candles are all out. A heavy sun is wise like lead upon me, and yet I will not sleep. Who's there? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? He came to bed. He hath been an unusual pleasure. He sent forth great largeness to your office. Being unprepared, I will begin the servant to defect, which else should free has wrought. All's well. I have drunk last night of the three weirds you see. To you, they show us the truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat and out serve, we would spend it to get out some word upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your coming soon, you. Good, repose the water. Thanks, I'm delighted to you. Go with thy mistress. When my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle towards my hand? Come, let me clutch you. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not a free of vision, sense of feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat of his brain? I see thee still, and in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me in the way I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. My eyes are made fools of the other senses, yet what's worth all the rest I see thee still. And on thy blade and dungeon gouts of blood which were not so before. There is no such thing. It is this bloody business which informs us to my eyes. While I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of thee to cold breath give. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Thou hast have made them drunk, hath made me bold, but hath quenched them, hath given me fire. He is about it. The doors are open. The serpent grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drunk their coffee. What? Who's there? Alack, I'm afraid they've awaked, and tis not done. Hark, I lay them down as ready. He could not miss them. My husband! I have done the deed. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one did laugh at this week, and one cried murder. There are two lodged together. One said, God bless us, and amen the other. I 
could not say amen when David say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing, and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought of in his ways, so they will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more! Macbeth doth murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that makes up the rabid sleep of care, the death of each day's life. What do you mean? Still it cried, Sleep no more! Glamis hath murdered sleep. Therefore, Codwar shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Why? Word is they. You do unbend your noble strength and take suffering for your sins. Go get some water and wash your silky lips in your hair. Why have you brought the daggers to the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the silky girls with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think of what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Infirm for purpose, give me the daggers. I'm sleeping in the bed of the picture. The guy of a child with a fear of being the devil. If you do bleed, I'll give up the faces of the grooms with all, for it must be their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? What hands are here? Ha! Huh? They pluck out my eyes. Will all the great Neptune's oceans wash this blood clean from my hands? No. This my hand will run for the multitude you see in Cardinal. Making the green ones red. My hands are of your color, but I shame for a heart so white. I hear knocking at the south entrance. Retire me to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy it is then, for constancy has left you unattended. To know my deed, to rest, not know myself. Wait, don't get with thy knocking. I would thou couldest. Who is there in the name of you, sir? Here's a farmer that pains himself with the expectation of plenty. Coming time, have napkins now about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock. Who is there in the end of the devil's name? Faith. Here's the privateer that could swear in those scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator! Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor. Come hither for stealing a the French hose. Come in, tailor. Here, you may roast your goose. No, never quiet. What are you? But this place is too cold for help. I'll go and order it no further. I have thought to have looked to all professions that go the prime rose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon, I pray you, remember the porter. Was it so late, friend? Here you went to bed, that you do lie so late. Faith, sir, you were crowded to the second cock. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things is drink especially provoked? Mary, sir, no taking, sleep, and yearning. Legend, sir, it provokes and then provokes. It provokes the desire, but takes a plain performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him, and it mars him. It sets him on, and takes him off. It persuades him, and disheartens him. Makes him stand to, and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in his sleep, and giving him blood, leaves him. Is that master stirring? Our knock is waiting. Here he comes. Good morrow, both, sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring worthy thing? Not yet. 
He didn't command me to come tell me, Mom. I've almost slept the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joke of trouble for you, but yet tis one. The lady will be delighted with physics pains. This is his door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Goes to King Hens today? He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down, and, as they say, lamentings heard in the air, strange screams of death. My young members cannot parallel a fellow to it. Oh, horror! 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 Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Most sacrilegious murder hath probed oak the Lord's anointed temple, and stole thence the life of the building. What is it you say, the light? Me, you, his majesty? Approach the chamber, and destroy your sight with the new organ. Do not let me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder, treason! Bank robber, Tom, they knock him away! Shake off this downy sleep, death's confident, and look upon death itself! Ring the bell! Oh. What is the business? It's such a hideous trumpet calls to our lady sleep with the house. Speak! Speak! Oh, gentle lady, tis not free to hear what I can speak. Oh, Banquo, Banquo! Oriel Master's murdered. Whoa! Alas, what in our house? Too cruel anywhere. Do enough, I freely contradict thyself and say it's not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had to live a blessed life, for from this moment there is nothing serious in morality. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood has stopped. The very source of it has stopped. You're a father's murder. But by who? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were all batched with blood, as were their daggers which unwiped and found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Yet, I do repent my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, his gas stabbed like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could have a heart to love, and in that heart, courage to make love known? Help me, Hens! Look to the lady! Why do we hold our tongues? The most they claim this argument for hours. What should be spoken here, where our face, hidden and on the whole, may rush and seize us? Let's away. Our tears are not yet brewed. Nor our strong sorrow, on the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid and suffering exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Well contingent. What will you do? Let's not get slow with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. Out to England. To Ireland, aye. Our separated fortunes shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in this mine. The nearer blood, the nearer bloody. Therefore to horse, and let's not be dainty and waiting, but shift away. There's war and that theft, which steals itself when there's no mercy left. Three score and ten, they can remember well, within the volume of which time I have seen. Hours dreadful and things strange, but this poor night hath trifled former noise. Ah, good father, by the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling way. Is it night's predominance, or the day's shame? Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done on Tuesday last, a falcon towering in her pride place was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses. A thing most strange and certain, beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, contending against obedience, as they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so, 
to the amazement of my eyes that looked upon it. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is it known you did this more than bloody deed? Those are Macbeth hath slain. Alas, his day. What good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Donovan, the king's two sons, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Then, tis most likely the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He was already named, and gone is going to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Colm Kill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors, and guarding them their bones. Will you to Scone? No, cousin. I'll help to buy. Well, I will submit. Well, may you see things well done there. Farewell. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Farewell, Father. God's venture go with you and with those that would make good or bad, and friends of foes. Thou hast it now, King, Cardinal, Columbus, all, as a weird moment promised, and I fear thou play us most valley for it. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee and Beth their species shine, why, by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope, but hush no more. Here is our chief guest. If he has been forgotten, it's been as a gap in our great feast, and all things unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to which my duties are with the most indissolvable tie for every minute. We should have else desired your great advice, which has been both grave and prosperous in this day's council. But we'll take it tomorrow. Is it far, you ride? As far, my lord, as we fill up the time, to this and supper. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parasite, filling their ears with strange inventions. But of that, tomorrow, with their withal, we have cause of state craving us jointly. Hide to your horse, I do, until you return at night. Goes Fleance with you? I'm a lord, our time is called upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to the backs. Farewell. Let every man be masters of his time, till seven at night. To make society a sweeter welcome, we'll keep ourselves till supper time alone. While then, God be with you. Sirrah, a word with you. I attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears in Bangor stay deep. And in his royalty of nature, raise that which would be feared. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked. As it is said, Mark Antony's was by Caesar. He chided the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, then made him speak to him, then, prophet like, hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown. And put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched by unlineal hands, no son of mine succeeding. To make them kings, the seed of Bengal kings? Rather so, come fading to the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Now go to the gate and stay there till we call. Was it not yesterday we first spoke together? It was. So please, your highness. Well then, now have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he in times past, which held you so unfortunate, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you in our last conference. You made it known to us, my lord. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and his issue? Whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so were your disasters. 
tug the fortunes on so I'll have any chance to mend it or be rid of it. Both of you know Bangor was your enemy. True, True my lord. lord. And so is he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life. And though I could with bare-faced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will about you, yet I must not. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives, your spirit shine through you. And in our most, I will advise you where to plant yourself, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on it. For it must be done tonight, and something from the palace. Always thought that I required clearness, and in him to leave no rubs nor botches in the work. Fleance, his son, who keeps him company, and absence to me is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll call to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon the street, abide with him. It is concluded, Banquo, thou soul's flight. If it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Is Banquo gone from court? I, madam, for it turns again tonight. Say to the king, I would attend to his leisure for a few words. <coughs> madam, I will. Not had, all spent, for our desire is got without content. To sacred to be that which we destroy, and by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do people alone? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done its worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic foreign levy, nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle my lord. Sleep over your rugged books. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. We must lay our honors in these flattened streams and make our faces visage to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and Fleance live. But in them, nature's copy's not a term. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come, stealing night, that scars us the tender eye of pitiful day. And with thy bloody and invisible hands, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. But hold thee still, things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So pretty, go with thee. But who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust, since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to direct and just. Stand with us. Hark, I hear voices. Give us light there. Tis he, the rest, no with the note of expectation already are in the court. His horses go about. Almost a mile, but he does usually, so all men do. From hence the palace gate to make it their walk. A light! A light! Stand to it. It will be rain tonight. Let it come down. Oh, sir, sir. Who didn't strike out the light? Was it not the way? But one is down, the sun is fled. We have lost this half of our affair. Well, let's away and say how much is done. <laughs> you know your own degree. Sit down, and at first and last, a hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but at best time we will require her welcome. Could not before me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart needs their welcome. Be large in mirth anon. We'll drink a measure to the table round. There's blood upon my face. 
his bankroll is then. Tis better be without than he within. Is he dispatched? Ah, oh, my lord, his throat is cut. That I did him. Thou art the best of the cut throats. Yet, he's good that did the like of Cleon. If thou didst, if thou art in our peril. Much royal, sir. Cleon's escape. Then comes my fit again. I had once been perfect, whole as the marble, founded as the rock. Now I am cabin, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. But they will say, Ah, my lord, the safe the ditch he buys, with twenty trench gashes upon his head, the least the death to nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will then breed no teeth for the present. Get thee gone. We'll hear ourselves again tomorrow. My royal lord, you did not get the cheer. The beast of soul was not up and out. While to the maiden, he's given with wealth. To feed were best to own. From thence, the sauce would need a ceremony. He were very proud of Sweet remembrance, sir. Now good digestion we on appetite, and health on both. Please your highness sit. Here had we now our country honor's root, were the greatest person of our banquet present, whom I'd rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. May it please your highness to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? Thou cannot say I did it. Never shake thy glory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit. Worthy friend. My lord is often thus, and I have been from his youth. Pray you, be pleased. The fit is momentary. Upon it thou will again be well. With much of your hands, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Be regarded not. Are you a man? Yes, and a bold one. That dare look on which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff! This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger, which you said it led you to Duncan. Shame itself! Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. Prison, see there, behold, look. If thou canst not, speak too. If charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments become the maws of kites. What? Put a man in folly? If I stand here, I saw him. Fie! For shame! My worthy lord, your noble friends do left you. I do forget. Do not use at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and help all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine, fill full. We drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss if he were here. To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and the pledge. Avant, and quit my sight, let the earth hide me. Think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom. Tis no other than its will, the pleasure of the time. What man dare? I dare. Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros of the hyper tiger. Take any form but that, and my fur nerve shall never tremble again. Hence, horrible shadow, on your mockery, hence! Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting, the most admired disorder. You make me strange even to the disposition that I owe. When you can behold such sights, and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks, when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you, speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question and rages him at once. Good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and better health attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. It will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move, and trees to speak. How goes the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. 
How sayest thou that Macduff denies his persons at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear, by the way, but I will say. I will tomorrow, and be times I will. To the weird sisters, more shall I speak. For I have been to know by the worst means, the worst. I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wade no more, returning where his tedious is go over. Strange things I have in head that will to hand, that must be active ere they may be stand. You lack the seasons of all nature. Sleep. Come, will to sleep. My strange and self abuse is the initiate fear that wants our use. We are yet but young indeed. My former speeches have but hated thoughts, which can interpret farther. Only I say, things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late, whom, you may say, if it please you, Fleance killed, for Fleance fled. Men must not walk too late. Who cannot want the thought? How monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donnelly to kill their gracious father. They in fact, how it did grieve Macbeth. Did he not straight, in pious rage, the two delinquents tear, that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was not that nobly done? Aye, and wise it too, for it would have angered him heart alive if he had been denied. So that, I say, he has borne all things well. I hear Macduff was in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds to have birth lives in the English court, and has received the most pious Edward. Thither, Macduff has gone to pray the holy king, upon his aid, to wake Northumberland in warlike fever. And this report has so exasperated the king, that he prepares for some attempt of war. Sent he to Macduff? He did, and with an absolute sir, not I, the cloudy messenger turned to me his back. Some holy angel fly to the court of England, and unfold his message ere he come that a swift blessing may soon return to this, our suffering country, under a hand of curse. I'll send my prayer for them. the cauldron, go! In the poisoned infant's throw, toad that under cold stone, days and nights has thirty-one. Sweltered venom, sleeping duck, boil thou first in the charming pot. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, cauldron, bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake, in the cauldron, boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. Adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and howlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double toil and trouble, fire, burn, cauldron, bubble. Scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, maw and gold. Of the raven, salt sea shark, root of hemlock, dig it in the dark. Add thereto a tiger's chaudron for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron, bubble. Cool it with the fabulous blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. However you come to know it, answer me. 
Though you untie the winds and let them fight against the churches, though zesty waves confound and swallow navigation up, though bladed cords be lodged and trees blow down, Though castles do topple on their water's heads, and houses and pyramids do slope their heads to their foundation. Though the treasure of nature's germans tumble altogether, even till destruction sicken, answer me to what I ask. Speak, demand, will answer. Say if thou rather hear from our mouth or from our masters. Call them, let me see them. Come high or low, thyself in office deftly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought, hear a speech, but say thou not. <laughs> Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear aright. Here is another, more potent than the first. Then live, Macduff, what need I fear thee? Yet I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of faith thou shalt not live. What is this that rises like the issue of a king, and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but speak not to it. <laughs> Fix his earthbound roots. Sweet bottom is good. What? Is this so? Aye, sir, all this is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer we up his sprites, and show the best in our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound, while you perform your antic round, that this great king may kindly say, Our duties did his welcome pay. Where are they? Gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Can they not buy you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of a horse. Who was it came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? I, my good lord. Time, thou anticipates my dread exploits. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon fire, give the edge of the sword his wife, his babe, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool, this deed I'll do before this purpose cool, but no more sights! You must have patience, madam. He had none. His fight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his titles, and a place in whence himself to fly? He loves us not. All is fear and nothing is love. As little as the wisdom, where the fights runs against all reason. My dearest cousin, I pray you school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. <coughs> I dare not speak much further. I take my leave of you. Shall not be long, I'll be here again. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. 
Sarah, your father is dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What? With worms and flies? With what I did, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird. Thou hast never feared the net nor the lamb, the pitfall, nor the gin. Why should I, mother? Poor birds they are not set for. My father is not dead, for all your sake. Yes, he is dead. And how wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell again. Thou speak it with all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools. For there are liars and swearers now to beat the honest men and hang up them. God help thee, poor monkey, but how thou do for a father? If my father were dead, you would weep for him. If you were not, it's a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Poor prattler, how thou talkest. What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place someone will signify where such as thou may find him. He is a traitor. Thou liest, thou shaggy villain! What? Hey! <gasps> Let us seek out some desolate shade, that there we are sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men, we strive our downfall and birth them. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven in the face, that it resounds as if fell a scholar, and yelled out like civil dollar. See, who comes here? My countrymen. Yet, I know him not. My average cousin, welcome hither. I know it, man. Good God, the times are moving the means that makes us strangers. Sir, amen. Stand Scott more of it? Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Be it their comfort, we're coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good seaward and ten thousand men. An older and better soldier, none that Christmas gives out. Would I could answer this comfort with the light. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air, where hearing should not lash them. What concern they? The general cause? Or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it shares some woe, though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes Savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven! My children killed too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And they must be from thence. My, my wife killed too? I have said. Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones? Did you say all? Oh, Hellkite, all? All my pretty chickens and their dad in one fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they're all sharp for thee, not that I am. Not for their own demerits, but for mine. Fell slot on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the west zone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart. Enrage it. Oh, I can play the woman with mine eyes and braggart with my tongue. But gentle heaven, cut short all intermission. Front to front, bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. And within my sword's length set him. If he escape, Heaven forgive him too. Come, go here to the king. Our power is ready. Our life is nothing but our lead. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long and never finds the day. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed Throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, 
write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while, in the most fast sleep. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, ma'am, which I will not report after her, you may to me, and tis most meet you should. Neither to you nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Lo you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. How can she by that life? Why, it stood by her. She has light by her continually. Tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she is now? Look how she works her hands. Is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands? I have known her continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot! She speaks! Out! Out, damn spot! Out, I say! One, two... Why then? Tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie! A soldier and a fear? What need we fear who knows it? And none can call our power to account. Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? To mark that? But then if I have had a wife, where is she now? What? Will these hands never be clean? No more of that, my lord, no more of that. You mark all of this started. Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Yet here's the smell of blood still. All the perfu perfumes of Arabia will not sweet this little hand. <sighs> what a sigh is there. The heart is sorely charged. I would not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. Pray God it be, ma'am. This disease is beyond my practice. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo is buried. He cannot come out of his grave. Even so? To bed, to bed. There's a knocking at the gate. Come, come, give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. We should go to bed now? Directly. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds throw death pillows to discharge your secrets. More needs she the divine than the physician. So good night, my mind she has made it and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. His uncle Seward and the good Macduff. Revenge is burning them and their dear causes. With to the bleeding and the grim alarm, excite the mortified man. We are burning blood cells when we meet. That way, they are coming. Who knows if Donald may be with his brother? For certain, sir, he is not. I have filed all the gentry. There is Seward's son and many unrough youths who even now contest their first of manhood. What does the tyrant? Great guns to name. He strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. But for sure, he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel it, the secret murders sticking upon his hands. And that we repulse a brave faith breach. Those he commands move only in command, none of them. Now does he feel his title hang loose about his neck, like a giant's rope upon dwarfish feet. Who then shall blame his pestered princes to recoil and start, when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? Well, march me on, take out obedience where tis truly you. Meet we the mess of the sickly wheel, and with him for we in our country's purge he struck bus. Or so much as it needs to do the sovereign flower and drown the weeds. Make we our march toward her. Till Burnham would remove to Dunsinane, I cannot take with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? The spirits that know all mortal consequence have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth, for no man born of woman shall have power upon thee. Then fly, false things, and mingle with the English epicures.
The devil damn thee, black, thou cream faced loon. Where gets thou that goose look? There's ten thousand. Yeast, villain? Soldiers, sir. What soldiers, way face? The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. Satan! Satan, I say! Satan! What's your gracious pleasure? What news, Lord? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Bring me my armor. Tis not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scur the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Bring me my armor. How does your patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she's troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Throw physics to the dogs, I'll none of it. Come, put on mine armor, give me my staff. Satan, send out! Doctor, the things fly for me. I will not be afraid of death in vain till Berna would come to Dunsinane. Were I from Dunsinane, away and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here. Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand. The chambers will be safe again. We doubt it nothing. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear before him. Thereby shall he shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery air and report of us. It, it shall be done. done. We learn that no other but the confident type can keep still in Dunsey. We will endure our city down before it. Tis his main hope, for when there is a vanish to be given, both more and less have given him the revolt, and none serve with him but constrained things whose hearts are absent too. But our just censures attend the true events and put beyond industrious soldiership. The time approaches that we with due decision make us know. We, we shall say we have in what we owe. Thoughts speculative, their unsure hopes relate, but certain issue strokes was arbitrary, towards which advance the war. Hang out our banners on the outer wall. The cry is still, they come. Our castle straight will laugh the siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine and the awe eat them up. <whistles> what is that noise? It, the cry of women, my good lord. I have almost forgotten the taste of fears. The time has been. My senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. My fell hair would in a dismal treatise rouse and stirs life were in it. I have supped full with horrors. Direness, familiar to my slaughter's thoughts, cannot but start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There was a time for such a word. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools away to dusty death. Out, out, great candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player who struts and fronts his hour on the stage that is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious my lord, I should report that which I say saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I did take watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and I know he thought the wood began to move. Liar and slave. Let me do your wrath, if it not be so. Within this three miles, may you see it coming. I say, a moving grove. If thou speak false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive till famine cling thee. Fear not, my friend, till Burnham would come towards Dunsinane. And now, a wood comes towards Dunsinane. Arm, arm, and out! Ring the alarm bell. Blow wind, come rap. At least we'll die with harnesses on our backs. Now near enough, he'll let his screens throw down.
down a show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall, with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy McDuck and we shall take upon us what else remains to do according to our order. Very well. Do we but fight the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath. Those clamorous harbingers of blood and dead. They have tied me to the stake. I cannot fly. But bear like I must fight the course. Who's he that's not born of woman? Such a one I have to fear or none. What is thy name? Thou be afraid to hear it. No, though thou cost thyself a name hotter than any is in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to my ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest, have more tyrants. With my sword I shall prove the lie that thou speakest. Thou wast born of woman. But swords I smile at, and weapons laugh to scorn, brandished by a man that's a woman born. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou be slain with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghost will haunt me still. Let me find him, fortune, and more I beg not. This way, my lord. The castle is gently ringing. The tyrant's people on both sides do fight. The noble thanes do bravely in the war. The day almost itself presses yours, and little is to do. We've met with foes that strike with silence. Enter, sir, the castle. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on my own sword? While I see lies, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, no hell turn! Of all men else I have avoided thee, but get thee back. My soul is too much charged with thy blood already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain in terms to give thee out. Thou lostest labor, and as easy mayst thou the entrenched heir, and with thy keen sword and presses make me bleed. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Spare my charm, and that man to whom thou still hast served, tell thee, Macduff was from his mother's womb, untimely rid. A curse be thy tongue that tells me so, for hath cowed my better part of man. I will not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to the show and gaze of the time. Will have thee, Sir Arnold Shazar, paint upon a pole and under it. Here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and be baited with the rabbit's curse. Though Vernon would come to Dutch name, and thou opposed to being no woman born, yet I will try the last. Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on McDuff, and damn me he who first cried, hold enough. Some must go off, and yet, by these I see, so great a day is cheaply bought. Picked up is missing, and your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived but till he was a man, but like a man he died. Then he is dead. Aye, and brought off the field. Your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Why then, God's soldier be he. Had I as many sons as I had hands, I would not wish them to a fair death. And so, his knell is no more. Hail, King! For so thou art, behold! Where stands the usurper's curse then? The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl, that speak my salutation in their minds, whose voices I desire loud in mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland! We should not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. 
to my thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be your earls, the first that ever scowled in such an honor name. What's more to do, which will be planted newly with the time, is calling home our wrecks out friends abroad that flood the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth these cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as is thought by self and violent hands, to call her own life. This and what needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one whom we invite to see us, crown and scope. Hail!